Welcome to Reptilian Diaries. I'm Frank. We do reptiles here. On today's episode, a buddy of mine, Sebastian DiDomenco, came from Colombia up to California. He had some stuff to attend to. He had a down day, so we hit the desert. I wanted to show him some stuff. This dude is an amazing photographer. I've got his Instagram linked and, and it's all over the video, so I'm not, I'm not tripping. You guys will see that. It's killer. He was also in my very first videos from Ecuador. That's where I met him. Just a good dude. Very knowledgeable about tropical reptiles and amphibians and very knowledgeable about photography. So just a, a fun little trip out to the desert. We found some cool stuff. I'm going to be shooting him, shooting photos. We're going to be flashing his photos. And then I'm going to go over just some very basic photography stuff, kind of like a kit to get you going. Very basic stuff. And in the next couple episodes, we'll add some tips into those about how to get some shots that you can be proud of. So let's do it. What up, folks? We're out here in the desert. I got my special guest with me, Mr. Sebastian. Yo, what's up? You. <laughs> and uh, he came all the way from Colombia to uh, check out Anza Borrego, Palm Canyon. So we're going to do a hike today. Uh, we're going to hit this canyon and go up in that area. Pretty sick. So we're going to do a quick hike because he doesn't have a lot of time and I don't have a lot of time either because I have to work tomorrow, but we're going to do this hike. I've found some epic reptiles on this hike. I've found crotalus on this hike. I've found lampropeltus on this hike. I've found soromalus on this hike, crotophytus, a lot of different species on this hike. We're going to walk. It's a couple miles up. Killer palm spring up there, which we'll show, and kind of walk out at dusk dark when the rattlesnakes are moving. So that's what the deal is. We're going to get after it. What do you think? I need some luck, man. Everything is gonna be a lifer for me. That's right. And look at that lens this fool's got. Probably not the proper lens for rattlesnakes, but we'll make things work. That's right. And we might see sheep. There's a lot of bighorn sheep up here, which is uh, which is super dope. Or bighorn goats, bighorn sheep. They're bighorn sheep. I know they are. So, we haven't found anything yet, except for peace, because it's super nice up here. The temperature is amazing. Oh, we found a couple of Petrosaurus, Scalopterus, some little Yudas and stuff, no snakes yet. But, Sebastian's first time in any sort of habitat like this, so he's just psyched, checking out the birds and the bugs and the freaking rocks and everything. He's taking some photos right now, but we're gonna walk up to the, to the main springs and then we're gonna come out at night. So. Piedras, as far as the eye can see, just straight rocks, man. I've seen a mountain lion in this canyon. I've seen bighorn sheep in this canyon. I've seen fucking damn near everything in this canyon. So we had one day to hit it. So we came here just because it's beautiful, even if we don't see anything. Just super peaceful, time to chill. This is a Monday for show. So we just caught this Petrosaurus mirnzi. Really neat little lizard. These guys live on these big old granite boulders and they, they're like Spider-Man. They can hang upside down, they jump from boulder to boulder. So, Seb is taking photos of this little dude. Pretty neat looking lizard, very cool. He agrees, he likes it. Oh, look at that. It has some like spikes 
Yeah, little Close ear, to, yeah. ear spikes. Check out the back, really neat. This one's missing his tail. It's got that cool banding plus like reticulation and even a little bit of blue down on the tail. When these guys are hot, the males are fired. They're just got crazy blue on them. This is actually a young male, but the adult males. So we'll let this little dude go later. All right, so let's talk about photography for a minute. Beginners, a good starting kit, basic stuff that you want to get. Number one is a digital SLR, digital single lens reflex camera. You can go with a digital SLR or you can do an, uh, what they're doing now is these new mirrorless cameras, which I'm actually shooting on right now. My photos I shoot on a DSLR, which is right here, this bad boy. I shoot on a Canon 6D. I'm gonna give you guys three lenses that uh, basically will complete your kit for reptiles and amphibians, unless you're doing real crazy stuff. The three lenses that you should have on your DSLR, whether it be Canon, whether it be Nikon. Starting out, you need a macro lens. Whether that be a 50 millimeter, a 100 millimeter, a 180, a 60, whatever. Um, depending on what you're going to shoot, I like to shoot with a 50 because it just gives me a lot of options. I can shoot little tiny lizards and I can also shoot, you know, larger stuff without having to be too close or too far away. So I, I do like the 50. I also like the 100s. I've shot with the 100s, um, the 100L from Canon. I'm sure Nikon makes a dope one too. Great lenses. Uh, you want to make sure you get a quality fixed focal length macro lens fixed focal length means one number in terms of length 50 millimeter 100 millimeter 60 millimeter you don't want some you know 55 to 105 or some nonsense like that when it comes to macro those are good for other things but with macro you want a fixed focal length that's the first lens you want second lens you want is a general wide angle lens my lens of choice is the canon 17 to 40 l it's a beautiful, nice wide lens for habitat shots. And you can kind of start getting wide angle shots, wide angle macro, wide angle close up, whatever you want to call it. That's going to be a topic for something else. But just for habitat shots, get a wide angle lens. A lot of these kit lenses, they're fine. It's an 18 to 55. Really quickly, in terms of focal lengths, 18, the smaller the number, the wider the, the, uh, the field of view. The larger the number, the more telephoto it is. So when you got an 18 to 55, 18 is very wide. And 55 is still generally considered more of like a wide or a standard lens. So it's great for landscapes, habitat, that kind of stuff. And then the third lens that I recommend is a telephoto lens. And there's a range of these things to fit the budget. So these, these are my telephotos, 70 to 200, 400. These are expensive, but these are amazing. And what these will allow you to do is obviously get up close to something that you really can't get up close to. So the 400, you're gonna need to have this on a tripod or it's gonna need to be real bright to use, but weary stuff here in the US, like collared lizards, chuck wallas, stuff like that, you're gonna need a lens like that to get up close. Plus, if you're traveling, if you're in Costa Rica, if you're in Africa, or if you're in, uh, you know, somewhere else, South America, and you want to shoot parrots, monkeys, stuff like that, you're going to need one of these bad boys. So now we've talked about macro, we've talked about wide angle, and we've talked about telephoto. Those three lenses literally will cover the spectrum for you. You'll be able to get damn near every kind of shot you want. The second very important thing that you need to do is get a flash and get a receiver to get that flash off of your camera. That's the most important thing about all the awesome photographs you see. The flash is not freaking is not the pop-up flash on the camera and it's not positioned directly on top of the camera like that. It's either a Canon or a Nikon system where the flashes come out and they're on either side of the lens or it's a completely handheld flash which is being remotely fired from receivers. Sounds expensive, but it's not. Check this out. So I'm a working man. I got a family. I'm not trying to spend freaking 800 bucks on a stupid flash system. So I go cheap. I go with a Young Nuo YN560 4. This lens, this uh, this flash right here is like 100 bucks. And then this little bad boy here, the Young Nuo RF603 N2. This is the receiver. This flash has a built-in transceiver, so you only need one of these. This goes on your camera, and then this literally just becomes completely mobile. Doesn't need to be anywhere near your camera at all. This fires it. That means, and you'll see in the video, 
how Sebastian or I am holding it above the animal. This, this allows somebody else to hold the flash for you. This also allows you to have, if you want to, you can buy two flashes, fire them both from different angles, and you can just, you can just really get creative and really nail the lighting. Boom, very important. Last thing I'm gonna show you is a diffuser for this, which is just as important as the flash itself because this puts out a harsh light. You don't want harsh light. This little bad boy right here. This thing's been all over the world. This thing's like 12 bucks on Amazon. Super cheap, makes all the difference in the world. It goes right over the head here, right over the head like that, and then boom, ready to rock. So now this is on my camera. This is in my hand. I can position it wherever I want while I'm shooting. Done, epic photos. So the hike was dope, very peaceful, but in terms of snakes, very quiet. Didn't see a single snake actually. Saw a couple cool lizards. He was uh, super stoked on some hummingbird that he saw. And other than that, just a beautiful, peaceful hike. So we hiked out at night onto the road cruising. Our plan was to cruise the lower desert just to find some of the common stuff. He really wanted to see a sidewinder, which is Crotalus cerastes. So we went after that and uh, whatever else we could find. Turned up a few snakes. It was pretty dope. Check it. So one of the unfortunate parts about herping is uh, Sometimes animals get hit and they're not dead yet, and it's a bummer, man. And this, we just found a beautiful young gopher snake who's kind of in his last moments. So he's beautiful, but he's, he's been hit. But we'll check him out. So that's Pituophis, and it's just, it's such a bummer when you see snakes like that and, and they've gotten hit. It's just, it's such a bummer. Like I said, you can see his mouth's open. He's got some blood in his mouth. He definitely got, he took a hit. I don't know if maybe a motorcycle ran him over or, or what, but. Uh, he's in bad shape. Think, man? I think it's a painful first encounter, I think. I have mixed feelings, I guess. Yeah. It's Yeah. Get him off the road. Maybe if it makes it, yeah. get back into the road again. So we'll put him off of the road, and uh, maybe it'll make it. I mean, he's he's actually a, he's a little active, so maybe he'll make it. So we're gonna bring him over to these bushes and let him go. So it's like really good, like like the best of both worlds, right? Yeah. Like a colubrid, not venomous, not dangerous, but the patterns of a really, really venomous one. Yep. I like that. Cool stuff, man. It's fun bringing somebody out here who hasn't seen this kind of stuff. It's it's a lot of fun. It's so so fat. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I promised I promised Sebastian a crotalus, and so we found two already. Both of them are Cerat crotalus cerastes sidewinders, and here's one of them right here. Tiny rattle. I'm not sure if it's actually rattling or if it's the wind moving it. No, it's just it's not rattling. It's so fat. <laughs> <laughs> that's crazy. So that's Crotalus cerastes. Sidewinders, they do the sidewinding motion, and these little guys live out in this flat, sandy desert. They're out here eating geckos, eating tiny little rodents. They're small snakes, they get like two feet long. They are toxic, but not too bad. They're not going to kill you. Um, they might put a, a sick or a very young person in the hospital, but I mean, you don't want to get bit by them, you don't want to play around. So, we're going to take some photos of this one, and we also found a huge one earlier. And we're going to take photos of both of them, get them off the road, and then call it a night. But uh, stoked, man, we found two of them. So let's check this guy out one more time. Oh, yeah. 
Got him. windy out here right now, but he's, he's taking photos of the Serastis. It's a big one. Probably the biggest one I've ever seen, actually. Was that? That's Kyanactus. That's a shovel nose snake. I think it's a Kyanactus occipitalis or occidentale, one of those. I can't quite remember right now. It's getting pretty late. But um, that's a shovel nose snake. Insectivorous snake. They only eat insects. Live out here in the sandy desert just with, just like those Crotalus cerastes uh, do. And yeah, really neat snakes. Very beautiful. Very fast. Difficult to photograph, but the pro over here is doing his photo thing. So let's go check him out. It's like grease lightning. Here you go again, trying to rewind. I'm not your show, and I really don't owe you so. Here you go again, pulling off the blinds. I oh, oh, oh. All right, guys, we're ending it here. Sebastian got to see his crotalus. We had a good night. It's late. Almost 3 a.m. Yeah, something like 3 a.m. I got to be up at 8 o'clock in the morning for work. We found some snakes. We made it home safely. Thank you guys for watching. Check out his Instagram because it is straight fire. I'm going to link it below. All the photos in this episode are from him and they're absolutely epic. So check the links and uh, thank you for watching. We're out. All right, guys, that's going to do it. That was a fun time out there with Sebastian. Like I said, I got his Instagram linked. Check it out. It's dope. I hope some of the tips with the camera stuff can help you guys get some gear and get you guys set up if you're not already. Hit me up in the comments if you have more questions and I'll do my best to answer them. Thank you guys for watching. More videos coming.